Hey, listen, it is critical that today, based on the things I'm going to share with you, that each of you listening in on the podcast, each of you watching on YouTube, that you take some action as quickly as you possibly can to protect yourself against cyber threat. There were two major data breaches announced this week, both of which are sweeping, wide-reaching, and very, very dangerous. Um, so I'm going to walk you through what they were and some steps you can take to protect yourself. Let's start with the first of two major announcements made this week. As you may or may not know, AT&T suffered a data breach in April and May of this year that was announced. The one announced this week is far more wide-reaching. In fact, to give you some perspective, uh, the most recent customer data that I could find on AT&T informs me that in Q1 of 2023, there were 222.8 million cell sus subscribers with AT&T. So you think about primary cell phone numbers, all the family members associated with that plan, it's a significant number. And AT&T just released this week that is likely that every single cell phone number, as well as the associated landlines, have been hacked and released on the dark web. More nefarious is the fact that text messages from those cell phone numbers have also been compromised. And I just want you to think about the implications of your text messages. Certainly, first of all, uh, bad actors, cyber criminals can use cell phone numbers to spoof your number and make calls and make it appear convincing. Using AI cloning techniques for voice cloning and video cloning, they can utilize these numbers to make it appear as though a relative is calling you and is in trouble. And if you haven't watched my episode on AI voice cloning, or you haven't researched yourself, it's time you do, because folks have fallen as recently as this week to AI-generated scams where a Yellowstone fan thought they were speaking with Kevin Costner and lost tens of thousands of dollars as a result of this scam, it was a, uh, a phony drawing to meet Kevin Costner. They actually met the AI replicated Kevin Costner in a meeting. And this AI replicated uh, Kevin Costner was so convincing that the person sent their money in, only later to find they've been scammed. There are countless cases of voice scams. I highlighted one in a previous episode where a couple in Pennsylvania fell victim to the what they call the grandparent scam, um, but it can be employed against parents, any loved one really. They got a phone call from someone presenting themselves as a police officer and they said, we have your daughter in custody. She was drunk driving. She struck another car. There was a pregnant mother in that car with their child and both the mother and the child were killed. And so your daughter's in serious trouble. We're going to put her on the phone right now and let you talk to her. What happened next was an AI-generated voice, so convincing, crying on the phone, clearly under stress, begging her parents to do something to help her. Her. Um, police officer then got back on the line and said, we'll be in touch. The couple later received a phone call from someone presenting themselves as an attorney representing their daughter and said, listen, we can get her out of custody, but you have to send us some money to post bail. The initial ask was for $17,500, which the couple went to their bank, withdrew, and about an hour later, a courier showed up their home to pick up the money. But that wasn't the end of it because they got a second call from that person representing themselves as an attorney requesting an additional 17500 which they provided. It was only later in the day that they received a phone call from their son-in-law and realized that none of these things had actually occurred and unfortunately it was way too late. Now granted the ring cameras recorded you know some photos of things they're hoping to get license plates numbers track it back to the courier find a pathway to the original criminals that enacted this scam, the likelihood is, is very low at this point that they'll recover their money. As a very quick side note on this topic, if you haven't done so already, set up a safe code with your family, with your loved one, with your friends, whatever that might be, potato, potato, 
Joe Biden's nose, whatever you want to pick out of the blue, make it random, make it memorable, never ever post it online, and say to each of your loved ones and friends, listen, if you get a call from me or I get a call from you, we're going to do a validation exercise. I'm going to ask you for this code, and if you give me the right code, I'll know it's you, and if someone's impersonating you and calls me pretending to be you, then I'm going to know that, you know, um, this is a scam and I'm going to be able to protect myself. So super, super important. But I want you to think about the potential when people have access to your text messages. I don't know what is in your text messages. Certainly nothing that I feel is nefarious, but could there be, you know, text messages about a loved one who perhaps has fallen ill? Could there be financial conversations happening? You know, who knows? But this is the information that scammers use along with your phone number, along with your addresses, along with your social, if they have access to it, to piece together a profile about you that then allows them to craft a very compelling scam story that then they attack you with. So I want you all to be aware of the AT&T breach because if you're like me and I am an AT&T customer, I'm confident my phone number has been compromised and you know now i'm going to get the employment offers now i'm going to get the random outreaches from folks and those are the least nefarious of all the potential outreaches so that's number one now we're going to talk about number two which is far far scarier this is truly the freddy krueger of data breaches in my opinion and i think you'll agree after you hear a little bit more about it so hacker obamacare not just announced but also released passwords, over 10 billion passwords. These were collected from multiple sites and it is a multi-year hack and multi-year exposure dating back to 2021. So I want you to think about the implications of this. Likely it is that your password, past or current, may be a part of this batch. And in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly how to find out if that is the case. I encourage all of you today, as you watch this video, once I show you how to do this, once I post in the show notes where you can gain access to the site to find out if your password is compromised, hey, put the video in pause. Don't even listen to the rest of it if you don't want to. Go in and check your passwords and take some action if you find your password has been compromised. But I want you to think about the implications of this. It could allow hackers to access any and all of your websites, your banking sites, your um, financial planning sites, anything related to you, your social media accounts, your financial life, your personal life can be compromised. And here's how they do it. Imagine that over the course of 2021 through 2024, just think about the many iterations of passwords that you might have used, right? So you may have ones that were active in 2021. Many programs prompt you to change that password every month, every three months, whatever that increment is. So over time, that password has evolved. If you have ever reused any, most, or all of your passwords for multiple sites, that puts you at greater risk. But here's what the hackers will do. They'll do what's called a brute force attack. They will post every iteration of password that they find associated with you, and they will hit every possible site they can. This might seem very labor intensive. In fact, it's not. Um, all they simply have to do is create a script, plug that script in and let it run, and it will test one, five, 10, 50, 100 different passwords all at once in complete sequence. I'll tell you how I know this. Uh, I've been taking a ethical hacker course and learning about how people can protect themselves and their companies from hackers. And they actually show you how to do brute force attacks so you can test your own network and make sure it's safe. So I've seen this in action. I've seen how the programming works. Pay strict attention to it, but there's more. Over 4,000 databases combined are part of this password breach and part of this leak. 4,000 databases. Now, you'll see publicly sites like X are listed, uh, the Adult Companion, Adult Friend Finder website. 
MyFitnessPal, LinkedIn even, Adobe even, Chinese company Tencent, which provides internet services. These are the ones that they're listing, but there are over 4,000 databases that have been compromised in this attack. So the effects are wide reaching, the implications are broad, the possibility of someone replicating you online, accessing your sensitive data, accessing your financial information, compromising your accounts, posing as you on your social media sites. All these things are possible if your password is compromised. So it is super critical that you follow me through the next steps that I'm going to show you. And there's a very easy and free way to determine if your password has been compromised. It starts with making a list of all the passwords you remember using. So do that first and then I'm going to take you onto the website and show you exactly how easy it is to see if you are at risk or not. Cybernews.com thankfully has gained access to this 10 billion record database of hacked passwords and they've created a website where you can go in and you can plug in your password and determine if that password may have been compromised. So I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Super simple. I'm going to plug in a very old password that I've used in the past that I don't currently use. And as you can see, it's that simple. Plug in your password, check now, and if you were part of this compromise, which in fact one of my very, very old passwords that I stopped using maybe four years ago uh, was part of this hack. Fortunately for me, I've gone in and I've used some password manager tools uh, to update, upgrade. Um, best practices, by the way, uh, a eight digit passcode can be hacked within a matter of seconds. Now, a 12 digit passcode can be hacked equally as quickly unless you use letters, numbers, and a combination of capital and lowercase letters in your password. Uh, random password generators are very successful and very difficult to hack. But please do today, now that you've watched this video, please click the link in my video or in podcast. Please do go to this website, plug in every password that you remember using, determine for yourself if you may be at risk. My name is Philip Macko. I'm a five-time published author, host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. My whole goal is to share information, to get your attention, and most importantly, to keep you safe. So I hope that you are going to take action based on the things I've shared with you today. Make your friends and family aware as well. Please share that website so they can test their passwords. Please, if you haven't done so already, click the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. My commitment to you is on a weekly basis. I'm going to share important, critical cybersecurity and scam related information. I'm going to teach you how it's done. I'm going to show you how to stay safe. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope to see you on the next episode.